Hello, my name is Rosanna Jerry Taylor from Beyond the Horizon Travel Agency. Thank you so much for joining us today for our first series of our bridal tips. Tonight, Angeline Pedrosa is going to show you how to take care of your skin. And after her, I'll be talking, talking to you about travel restrictions to Dominican Republic, Mexico, and Jamaica that are the points where travels, travelers are going right now. So please, let's welcome Angeline Pedrosa. Hi, I'm Angeline Pedrosa. I'm actually um, a professional makeup artist and actually an event planner of many years. Um, I started off as a makeup artist in New York City, where I'm actually from. So I got to see a lot of the behind the scenes for uh, what goes on during weddings, before weddings, that kind of stuff. As a makeup artist today, I actually wanted to talk about the importance of how brides should prepare their skin for their wedding day. Whether you're getting married locally, out of state, out of country, at a destination, it's very important that your skin is healthy. Because number one, um, there's going to be two things that are going to happen on your wedding day. Number one, if your skin is not healthy, um, it doesn't matter what kind of makeup the makeup artists use. It could be the most expensive makeup in the world. The reality is makeup is only going to highlight those areas that are actually, um, that are challenging as well as highlight your good areas. So the areas that you have trouble with, you definitely wanna take care of in advance so that not only does your skin look great in person, but also in photos. So I'm actually going to go really quickly over some uh, tri uh, ticks and, tricks and, and tips that I have to get your skin ready for your uh, wedding and to make the best of it. Um, my number one recommendation is if that you don't already have a skincare routine, it's really important that you start as soon as possible. Make sure that you actually get a skincare routine um, from a consultation based on a professional, whether it's a, uh, an esthetician or some a makeup artist or someone that knows about skin, it's really important because no skin is alike. So you definitely want a regimen of skincare that's correct for your skin. So if you have oily skin, you definitely want to make sure that the products that are, you're using are not heavy and are not going to overproduce oils. If you have dry skin, you want to make sure that you're using uh, products that are super moisturizing and that are going to give your skin that deep hydration that it lacks. So it's really important that you at least start your skincare routine, if not one year, at least six months before your wedding. Again, this is super important because most of the time as a makeup artist, I'll have people sit in my chair and they'll have certain skin problems and they think that makeup is going to cover that. That's actually completely incorrect. All makeup is gonna do is actually highlight the fact that if you're overly dry, it's gonna show that you're overly dry. Um, if you have any type of skin conditions, it's gonna actually highlight that. So the best way to have the best makeup on your wedding day is to make sure that you're using the right type of skincare. So you wanna make sure that you use, that you cleanse your skin twice a day that you also not only use a moisturizer, but a serum. Serums are super important because they penetrate deeper layers of the skin and they're high, they have higher concentrations of active ingredients, which means if you're, if you're looking for anti-aging or if you're looking for something to control acne or if you're looking for something to control dryness, a serum is gonna actually do that because it penetrates deeper layers of the skin. So. If you think about a plant, if you just water the top of the plant and the roots don't get watered, what ends up happening to that plant? That plant tends to die and age a lot quicker. But if you water the roots, which that's what a serum technically does, it pretty much waters the roots into your skin, it's going to help the surface of your skin look better. So you always want to do cleanser. You want to use a toner, um, depending on the type of skin that you have. Um, the cleanser should be adequate. So if you have dry skin you, or sensitive skin, you want to use um, things that don't have soaps in them, things that are not foaming, more like uh, 
like milk cleansers if you have actually oily oily skin so you want to use more of a purifying foaming cleanser that sort of thing um the second thing would be your serum you want to make sure that you just put press it into your skin and i'm going to show you really quickly so i actually have an anti-aging serum my skin is already clean so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take one pump of this I'm going to put it on the fingertips. You always want to put everything on your fingertips. And I'm going to start in my drier areas and then kind of work it all through my skin. You want to give it about 10 to 20 seconds when you feel that your skin has absorbed it. Serums are always water-based, so they get absorbed super quick. The next thing you want to do is add your moisturizer. So because I'm on the drier side, I add a little bit of a heavy moisturizer, but I use about a pea size. So all you wanna do is you just wanna make sure they use about a pea size and you wanna massage that only with your fingertips. And what a moisturizer technically does is it helps protect that outer skin while also ensuring that the serum that you just put on stays in your skin. So it creates a barrier and it also protects but it doesn't provide enough nutrients to use it on its own. So that's why it's important to use serums with moisturizers. And this is one of the things that I always explain to my brides. And when you have your makeup artist doing your application, you want to make sure that they're actually incorporating skincare into your routine. If it's nighttime, I always recommend maybe a facial oil. I sometimes like it in the day if I'm extra oily, excuse my dog, if I'm extra oily, I'll just, I mean, if I'm extra dry and I just kind of press it just to give myself a little bit more moisture. And the last thing that people always neglect is eye cream. You want to make sure you use a really good eye cream, especially for like dark circles. So you want to put just a little bit about a teardrop and you want to do it around the orbital of the eye with your ring finger. That is the most gentlest finger. So it's gonna, it's not gonna put too much pressure around the eye. And you just kind of want to massage it in until it's all absorbed. And then the last thing is you always want to make sure hydration, hydration, hydration. Um, drink plenty of fluids, waters. Um, water is super important. You also, if you like fruit, have fruits that are high in water, like watermelon, that kind of thing. The night before, I would say at least 24 hours before your event, avoid things like alcohol because they tend to dehydrate your skin. And the next day you're going to see a lot of things like dark circles, maybe blotchy skin, things of that sort. So if you can avoid alcohol at least 24 to 48 hours before your wedding, you'll thank me later because your skin is going to look so much better and just try to drink as much water as possible, especially if you're in a hot climate. If you're in a place and you're getting married where it's a hot climate, it's very easy to get dehydrated because you're sweating more. So you wanna make sure that hydration, water is your number one go-to. Thank you so much, Angelina. I have to say that I'm not a bride, but I'm learning a lot about skincare. I, was, I didn't know the importance of using a serum and uh, you mentioned also a toner. You know, the only thing that I do when I get up is I just put a moisturizer and then at bedtime, my, my, night, my night cream, but I didn't know all those steps. I was saying, oh my Lord, my skin must be so dry. <laughs> yes, and also what I actually forgot to mention, you also wanna make sure that you exfoliate your, your face and your body at least two to three times a week. Um, especially leading up to your wedding, because that's going to make sure that the, any of that skin that's um, being released from the new, you know, as your new skin starts to grow, your dead skin starts to shed. And a lot of times we mistake dullness or um, dry patches for being dryness when it's actually just dead skin still clinging on. So you always want to make sure that you use um, a really good exfoliant. Try using things that don't have too much grains in them, things that are more gentle on the skin, especially for the face. For the body, you definitely want to exfoliate, especially things like elbows and knees that tend to get a lot drier. 
Um, so those are a lot of things that you definitely want to incorporate because it's just going to make your skin just glow and look absolutely beautiful the day of your wedding and your makeup and your photos are just going to come out even more stunning. Do you have any uh, brands that you would recommend that is easy for the brides to find maybe on um, CVS? Yeah. Or okay. So I personally don't, I mean, unless you're on a budget, I try to stay away from drugstore um, brands only because they tend to be filled with a lot of toxic chemicals and a lot of fillers, a lot of mineral oils, things that are actually horrible for your skin. But some of the brands that I personally have worked with and I really um, like uh, their ingredients, um, I would have to say, um, I, I like Derma, um, Dermalogica. It's actually a really great brand. They have several different selections that you can, several different lines for all types of skin type. I also really, really like um, a brand called um, Tatcha. You can find that in Ulta. Well, I'm sorry, you can find that in Sephora. Um, there's also a really great brand. I believe it's called Elemis. E-L-E-M-I-S. It's very marine based. It's a really beautiful line. Um, there's actually tons of really great clean lines. I would just suggest that brides look into what's called clean beauty, meaning these are beauty brands that are not going to have all the chemicals that a lot of the American companies allow that are actually banned in Europe for being toxic and dangerous. So I would always recommend that brides stick to brands that are European based or have a European aesthetic. Um, I personally use a brand called Monet, which I absolutely love. It works for me. It's wonderful for my skin. It has a great price point. Um, if anybody's interested in that line, they can feel free to send me a message. I'm more than happy to give them information. Um, but there's a lot of great brands out there. Um, but what's important is the ingredients, because again, like if you're paying, you know, $10 for a moisturizer, yeah. you have to wonder what's really in that moisturizer. So quality well, ingredients are always going to cost a little more, but they're going to make your skin a lot healthier. And probably they're going to last longer as well. They do. So they have higher concentrations. So they actually last you about um, four to five times longer than what you would buy in a uh, in a drugstore okay so the key element is that uh, let's say like uh earth ingredients natural um let's say uh it's all organic ingredients those are the ones that you should be looking for when you're not necessarily organic but at least clean meaning it doesn't have toxic chemicals um no, it doesn't no, have toxic no, okay. preservatives um, I always say stick to European guidelines. They have the best skincare in the world. They don't, they actually don't allow over 1100 chemicals that the Americans do. So their, their formulations are actually a lot healthier for skin, or at least if you're going to pick an American brand that the American brand has, um, a, a standard of European beauty, meaning that they follow the European standards and not the American standards. So those well-known brands like Neutrogena? Uh... I, would, I personally don't recommend them because again, um, they're, full, they're full of a lot of toxic chemicals that people are not aware of. So I would definitely invest a little bit in your skincare. Again, your skin is the, your face is the first thing people see. This is the representation of who you are. So the better your skin looks, a better representation that you have. It might seem like a more expensive um, investment, but if you actually look at it in numbers wise, the investment is actually cheaper than if you would buy a cheaper product because you actually need less of it and it actually lasts you a lot longer. Yeah. So in the long run, you actually save money you're actually getting a much better product, a much more effective product, and a product that's safer for you and your body. Cool. And the other thing is I, I'm sure that helped you with the aging process. So it, it retards the process, I bet. Yes. Um, 
for one of those brands. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm the first one that I'm going to yeah. trade my skin. Anyone have any, <laughs> any advice? If they're not sure, you know, what's right for their skin, I'm more than happy because again, I've worked in this industry for over 10 years and I know skincare extremely, extremely well. So if anyone wants to reach out, even if it's just to kind of, hey, can you recommend something for my skin? I can definitely um, let you know what I would recommend for your skin and let you know where you can actually get them and help you within your budget. Can you tell them uh, where they can reach to you, Angeline? Yeah, so they can reach me right here on Facebook um, under either Angeline J. Pedroza, P-E-D-R-O-S-A, or my events page, which is AJ um, pl um, Planning Events. I'll actually, um, I'll have Rosanna listed on this video. Um, you can reach me on Messenger and I'm more than happy to answer any type of questions and give you any kind of guidance you may need. Awesome, so please girls don't, don't hesitate and reach to her. You have heard her and she has a wonderful advice for all of us, not only for brides, but really for any woman how to take care of our skin. So please make sure that you reach to her if you want any advice in regards to your skin. Yes. Now uh, I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna start uh, talking about what we were saying that is gonna be the entry requirements. Let me see if I can pull it out. Great. We are gonna start with Mexico. Mexico uh, is not requiring any test or any uh, quarantine right now. They have been open since they opened the country and uh, you don't need to do anything other than to book your flights and your hotels and you'll be there. Uh, Me Mexico is open right now at 60% capacity as of March 1st, uh, according to the Washington Post. Starting on January 26th, our American government is requiring for all international travelers to take a COVID test, it has to be either a PCR or antigen test and has to be performed 72 hours prior your trip. That is three days prior your trip. Uh, many hotels in Mexico, especially in those well-known areas like, like Cancun, Puerto Vallarta, uh, Los Cabos, pretty much all the hotels are offering the free test for you. So you don't have to worry about where you have to go to get your test is done at the hotel and in most of the cases are performed uh, by uh, personnel from the hospitals or other areas that they have contact with. But the, the most important thing is that the, they are at free cost. They have no cost for you. And if, you if it's for any reason has any cost, it's gonna be very low because the hotels are covering some portion of that. Uh, if you enter to Mexico, you do need to to complete an online health questionnaire. And this will be also in addition to your tourist card. Those forms you can find it at mexicotouristcard.com. I highly recommend you to do it way before your departure to fill those forms online and make sure that you print one copy in case that you need a printed document and also carry it as a digital ID in your cell phone, like an email or some version that you can present. Um, remember that now the airlines trying to minimize the contact with the passengers, they are no longer passing the immigration forms. So make sure that you carry them with you. Now we are gonna pass to the Dominican Republic. These entry requirements have been updated at March 17th. Please make sure that you check before you travel, what are the last entry requirements? These things are changing by weeks. So what I'm sharing today, it might change for next week. So make sure that you follow the links that I'm giving you here. It's gonna be in this presentation and that uh, you have your information and your departure dates and everything that you need to check what are your requirements. And also feel free to contact me as a travel agent. I'll, I'll, I love to guide my customers step by step so they don't have to travel with any worrisome. I like to give them peace and that they are all taken care and they, they just follow my guidance. So starting, starting March 10th, 
Anyone arriving in Jamaica will require to present a negative COVID test taken within three days of their arrival. Jamaica only will accept PCR, NAA, RNA, or the antigen test for entry. Before visiting, travelers must complete an online travel authorization form. This means that the government will receive your documents and after they evaluate you, they will either agree for you to enter their country or they will deny you the entrance. In most of the cases that I have seen, everybody agree it's a welcome to the country as long as they have fill out all the information and they are showing that their test, uh, their COVID for test has been done. Travelers to Jamaica are only permitted to stay at the approved hotels within the resilient corridor. This corridor goes from Montego Bay, Negril and Ocho Rios. They are the most well-known touristic areas. So don't be afraid that you won't be able to go to your favorite hotel because it's most likely that it's gonna be included. Just make sure that if you're gonna do excursions or going out of your hotel, that you stay on that resilient corridor, not out, because that's the only area where tourists are allowed. Uh, visitors are required to sign up for the Jamaica CARES insurance programs. Uh, this is a program that the government is uh, making mandatory for everyone going to Jamaica. It costs $40 and uh, it protects you in the case that you get sick and uh, or for any other, it protects you from COVID and any other sickness. Some hotels like Sandals Resorts, they offer that to you for free. Uh, select hotels in Jamaica are offering the COVID test that are mandatory for American travelers returning to USA. Some hotels are offering that for free. Some hotels are offering for a minimum extra cost. And like I said, for Mexico, the airlines are not giving the documents for immigration. So make sure that you go online and that you get those documents in printed and in digital version in case that you need it. Now we will go to review the entry documents to Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic, like Mexico, do not require COVID, negative COVID test or quarantine when you arrive to their country. They are wide open. And uh, the Dominican Republic is, let me see, I'm, I think I didn't change thing. There it is. But all the passengers, when they arrive, they will be tested, uh, they will, their temperatures are going to be checked and they are going to do an aleatory breath test that will be performed between the 3% to 15% of the passengers arriving. So don't feel uncomfortable if they separate you from the line and they make you take this test. It's, it's part of their norm now. Uh, select hotels in the Dominican Republic are offering the free COVID test as well for American travelers returning to America. And uh, it's, a, it's a very low cost if it's not for free. The, the Dominican Republic is offering a free health coverage plan at no cost to you, but it's for travelers that are arriving until March 31st, 2021. If your trip is after that date, probably you won't have that health insurance. And to benefit from that, your trip has been, you have to be entered the Dominican Republic by air and book one hotel. Uh, the travelers need to fill a health affidavit. It must be filled and printed, but starting on April the 1st, they will use the digital form only. And again, remember that the airlines are most likely not giving you the documentation, the immigration forms. Make sure that you find out what are the forms that you need to fill before your departure. Even between the states, I live in Texas. If I want to go to, let's say, Colorado, 
I need to figure out the entry requirements for that state because right now, everywhere in between the states, everywhere you go abroad, international uh, countries has their own requirements to entry their countries due to this COVID pandemic. So don't go anywhere before you figure out what are the requirements. Some places are requiring for you to quarantine seven days, 14 days. So I highly recommend you to check that way before. With this presentation, I'm gonna close my screen. Oh, well, if you wanna look for me, here is my contact information, my Instagram, my Facebook, YouTube channel, my website and my email. And uh, if you have yours, Angelina, I would love for you to share it as well. Yes, just give me one quick second. I'm actually going to pull that information up right now. Okay, when you're ready, you let me know. So I will stop my share so you can share yours. Yes, give me one yes. second. I can know where to see you. Mm -hmm. And uh, next Tuesday, Angeline is going to tell us about how to choose your bridal gown. And I'll be sharing uh, how to travel, tips traveling with your bridal, bridal gown and uh, travel restrictions for St. Lucia. That is one of the favorite spots for honeymooners as well. Right. Are you ready? Just give me one quick second. I almost have all the information up. Just give me one quick second. One moment and I will share all that information. Okay. I'm just gonna slide show. Hold on one second. Let me stop my share. There you go. So now you can. And then just like one quick second and I almost have it all here. Hold on. I hope that you find this information useful. Um, I, I hope that you find this information helpful to you and that uh, we are doing what we can to bring the staff that are in the minds of the travelers right now, in the minds of the brides right now. And uh, whenever you are planning a destination wedding, Angeline and me, we will be more than happy to help you with the planning process and to help you to choose the destination according to your wishes, according to your dream. And uh, we can do more than just help you with the planning. Angeline can give you always tips that goes farther than just being the wedding planner. And I always uh, mm -hmm. give more tips than just taking care of the travel portion. I'll, I'll go with you step by step also in that plan. Okay, all right. I'm totally ready whenever you are. Okay, just share your screen. Okay, give me one second. Do this. So I just wanted to, to share this. This is my information. So you can find me on Facebook. Um, this is my, oh, sorry. This is my event planner page. Um, I'm also on Instagram and this is also my Instagram makeup page. But if you wanna find me on Facebook, just go to AJ Event Planner. You can send me messages, you can ask for advice. Um, I love you know giving free consultations to people. Even if it's just a question, feel free to ask. I'm here to help. Um, and again, I just want to make sure that you have the best wedding possible. So feel free to reach out to one, any one of us. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Angeline, for your time and for these wonderful tips that you have shared with us and with the brides. I hope that uh, everybody that has seen your presentation today is actually taking notes and is going to start practicing what you have told us. Definitely, I know that tomorrow I'll be looking for my new line of and moisturizers to help me <laughs> with my skin. So thank you so much. You're thank welcome. you so much for being here tonight. And uh, to the brides and the, the girls that have seen us, thank you. We look forward to seeing you next Tuesday at 7 p.m. It's going to be March the 30th. And we will be talking about your bridal gown, how to choose it. It's super exciting. Yes. Thanks.
Thank you for having me, Rosana, and I hope everyone has a great night. And just um, if anyone has any questions about skincare, or anything, uh, event planning or makeup related, feel free to send me a message and I'm very good at responding. So um, yeah, just feel free and I'm glad to give you any advice I can. Awesome. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye-bye. <laughs>